The Peterson graph is a really well-known, famous graph. It happens to be the counterexample for many given conjectures over the years. And there's a funny saying that you can't give a graph theory talk without putting the Peterson graph somewhere in your slides. So you should recognize this drawing of the Peterson graph. Now, in this video, I'd like to prove the fact that the Peterson graph is non-planar. And I'm going to do this in two ways. The first way using Kuratowski's theorem, and the second way using Wagner's theorem. Proof number one comes about because we can show that the Peterson graph contains a subgraph, which is a subdivision of K33. Now that's going to rely on Kuratowski's theorem. Showing that it has such a subgraph is going to show that it's non-planar. But you may wonder, why am I choosing K33? Doesn't it have a subdivision of K5? Even though the Peterson graph looks remarkably similar to K5, it does not contain a subdivision of K5. If you think about it, it actually makes sense, because K5, the complete graph on five vertices, necessarily has every vertex of degree 4. So if you were to take that graph and subdivide it, you would still have vertices, five vertices, of degree at least 4. And so if that was a subgraph in your bigger graph, you would need to have at least five vertices, which all have degree at least four. And that doesn't happen in the Peterson graph, because the Peterson graph is three regular. So even though the Peterson graph does not have a subgraph, which is a subdivision of K5, we want to show that it does have such a subgraph, which is a subdivision of K33. Let's start. First, I'll redraw the Peterson graph and then I'll label the vertices 1 through 10. Next, I want to look at a particular subgraph. So I'm just going to erase, or just leave as dotted lines, two of the edges. So you don't want to now imagine the subgraph, which is just all of the solid edges. So we are now looking at the subgraph of the Peterson graph with the edges 3, 4, and 7, 10 removed. Now looking at this subgraph, I'd like to start to search for the structure of K33. So I'm going to highlight three vertices in red and three vertices in green. The reason I've done this is because I'm looking for the overall structure of a complete bipartite graph with three vertices in one partite set, let's say the red set, and three vertices in the other partite set, let's say the green set. Okay, so let's redraw this subgraph with this new picture in mind. I'll draw the green vertices on top and the red vertices on the bottom. The red vertex 1 is adjacent to the other three green vertices. Now vertex 9 is adjacent to vertex 6, and while vertex 9 is not directly adjacent to vertex 5, there is a path going through vertex 4, so we'll draw that in. Also, there's a path going from vertex 9 to vertex 2, going through vertex 7. Similarly, if I look at vertex 8, I will notice that it's either adjacent or has a path to each of those green vertices. So I'll draw that in as well. Now it's really clear that the subgraph we were looking at is indeed just a subdivision of K33. Therefore, by Kuratowski's theorem, the Peterson graph is non-planar. And we're done the proof. Now let's start a second proof. So first I'll redraw the Peterson graph. And the point here is to show that the Peterson graph has a K5 minor. In other words, we're going to use Wagner's theorem in this proof. Now, how do we do that? Well, this is where we use the fact that the Peterson graph looks like K5. I'm going to highlight all of these red edges, which are sort of spoke edges, if you will. If I imagine what happens if I contract each one of those red edges in turn, what will I get? I'll end up with something isomorphic to K5. Therefore, by Wagner's theorem, the Peterson graph is non-planar. And we're done the second proof. So you can see that clearly the Peterson graph is non-planar, and you can use two different methods to prove it. Another key thing to notice is that sometimes Wagner's theorem is easier to use, sometimes Kuratowski's theorem might be more apparent. So whenever you're looking at a particular example, remember that you have both Wagner's theorem and Kuratowski's theorem at your disposal. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.